Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In my last video I resurrected a bunch of um, deceased and corrupt strange tansoms and moved them to Blightgate, but there are actually a lot of corrupt and glitchy max systems in The Sims 2 that I wanted to like look through and explore. Um, a lot of them are deceased sims, to be fair to Maxis. Initially in the base game they never intended for any of these sims to be playable or resurrectable. But then of course with the university expansion pack they introduced the option to resurrect dead sims and that opened like an entire can of worms. Some of these sims you can't actually resurrect um, with the with the Grim Reaper phone, um, you can't actually resurrect some of them, but some of them actually are resurrectable in-game, um, and they're still messed up, so it's pretty amazing. Um, so if you watched my last video, as I, as I mentioned, I resurrected a bunch of Strange Town Sims, and they're still here, um, the neighbourhood, I managed to get back into the neighbourhood. Sometimes after I do stuff, the entire neighbourhood won't work, but it seems to be functioning again functioning okay, but this lot will not load. Like, any lot that Nutfooter is on, he just kills it. It just, there's a never-ending loading screen, and it won't load. I'm pretty sure it's him, because um, when I moved all the other sims into the Strange Town lot, it functioned okay, and it's every lot he's on, so it's not even just, like, the lot I moved from Strange Town, it's just any lot he's moved to. Um, I can never get back into it, so, so that's what's happened there. <laughs> So if I ever decide to go back and look at these sims, I'll probably have to move them out using cheats or something because I can't get back into the lot. So this time I've decided to resurrect um, a couple of Veronaville sims. This is actually the first time I've loaded Veronaville um, since I've reinstalled the game. I played through Veronaville in the uber mega hood, but I haven't played this version of Veronaville so I'm going to be resetting all these neighbourhoods later because I'm pretty sure <laughs> everything I'm doing will probably corrupt them. Um, but yeah, so there are two sims um, in particular that someone actually brought up on Reddit in a post. Um, one is Cleopatra Cap and the other is Calpurnia Caesar. They both have very odd chin genetics, so they have like, if you look there's some photos and they have this thing, it almost looks like they have a metal stick or something poking out of their chin. But that wasn't actually the part that really drew me to them. I was reading the Sims wiki, and apparently if these Sims are aged down and have more children, um, any female Sims they have that inherit their mouths, their mouths will apparently be in the middle of their forehead. So, yeah, I thought that was like really weird and I had to see what that looked like. So, I'm going to be experimenting with their genetics in this video um, after I resurrect them. And apparently you can resurrect them in-game. Okay, so I'm not really sure. I assume I'll need their gravestones to resurrect them. Um, I don't know where their gravestones are, but th I, th I think there are a bunch in the Cap household. So I assume if they're buried anywhere, it'll be here. And um, I might resurrect their like husbands too. That way there's automatically a sim that I can like have them have kids with. Um, that just seems like the easiest option, really, to just resurrect all of them. I think their husbands can be resurrected as well, but I'll have to see. This is the first time I have loaded this family in, uh, pro like, over a decade. I haven't, I haven't been here for, like, over a decade. It's amazing. Oh my god, I really love Veronaville too. I just, I don't, it's hard to pick like a favourite neighbourhood, but I did really like Veronaville back in the day. It was quite interesting to me. Um, with like all the fairy sims. This all, <laughs> look at that angle. Some of the landscaping of the sims is weird. They actually have more graves on this house than the goth family, which seems wrong somehow, like aesthetically, because the goths are like, meant to be kind of creepy. Okay, so there's Cleopatra Cap and um, Calpurnia Caesar, so I don't remember the names of both of their husbands. I know Anthony Cap is Cleopatra Cap's partner, so I'm just going to assume that, yeah, Julius Caesar must be her husband. So if we resurrect these four, there's a bunch of others too. I think they're their kids, and then Caliban Cap. They have, like, such big family trees in this game. Like, they go back so many generations and stuff, like... 
who's like <laughs> I'm just gonna have a quick look. Like there's Consort Cat. And then those are his parents. And none of his family are actually here. So they've got the surname Albion. The surnames in this neighborhood are pretty interesting too. Some of them are based on like Roman historical figures or um the surname Albion just is like a, an, an old word for like the British Isles. It's just it's it's a peculiar mix of like historical things. And then of course you've got the whole Shakespeare theme. Um I think it's actually her side of the family that these Sims are on. So yeah, Calpurnia Caesar and Julius Caesar and yeah, they're basically all of her grandparents, um, Contessa's grandparents, that we're going to be resurrecting. I think most lots, when you load them, they have some kind of scripted story, um, but I don't think this one actually did, which is interesting. I don't know if the Veronaville lots have stories. I, I think they do, maybe. I think the Summer Dream one does, but I don't remember in this case. So we're just going to call the Grim Reaper and assume this is going to work. Like, I assume he knows them, but... Oh god, he doesn't. <laughs> okay. So, so perhaps we'll resurrect Contessa and then resurrect the others. There's going to be too many people in the house if we do it that way, though. But I think that may be the only option right now. Um, because he doesn't seem to know any of the other Sims. Um... Well, I could use the inseminator as well, and I assume that would work as well, but I don't know. Okay. Just to wonder if, like, I don't know what happens if you resurrect her, I haven't looked into her. It's interesting that a lot of these sims have bios, even though they were never intended to be played and such. I feel like maybe they, they hadn't decided like which sims would and wouldn't be at a certain point in development, uh, or like, yeah, I don't know. Or maybe it was just like, because they knew people would potentially one day see the bios somehow, maybe they wrote them in, or they might have just done it for fun, I don't really know. So hopefully she can resurrect her grandparents. Yeah, okay, so... <laughs> We're gonna have to move someone out though. We'll, we'll start here, I guess. Technically, I think we probably don't need all of them, because I think the effect is the same for both of them, so we probably only really need one couple, but I thought I might as well try it with both. And also, we only really need the female sims, but I don't know. Do they have bios too? No. Because <laughs> they were definitely, they're very far back in the family tree. You can see them fighting in the background. I can't move out the teenagers. Um, can they resurrect the other grandparents? Did they know them? No. Who's Scribonia? Oh, Scribonia was their kid. Right. Okay. But but one of them, the next one, like if we resurrect uh, Calpurnia, then she should be able to resurrect her husband, I think. Julius Caesar. It's a good job they have so much money already. <laughs> Some of the decor in this is a little interesting, like that blue carpet, I always kind of thought of that as like a kid room carpet. Well, they've got the red starry one in the living room. Okay, so I'm guessing no one else can be resurrected now without moving someone out, so we'll just move out 
Yeah, see it's not even interactable. Do they any of them have bios? I don't think so. They have no personality. I can see that instantly. I think uh, Contessa's in like a much more normal state. She's also really fit. Like a lot of these dead sims are just... <laughs> They're really fit. <laughs> then again, so is a... Uh... So is Consort. And the others. I, I guess this is just like a really healthy, active family. I don't know. So they've already gotten into a fight. <laughs> and this is with Free Will turned off. This is all Romeo just interacting with Tybalt. Yeah, I think Romeo lost. But well, that's what you get for initiating the fight, bad. Also, everyone kind of needs the loot <laughs> right now. Okay, so I'll just quickly move the caps in down the street. Oh, technically that's the Caesar household. It would have been easier just to move another sim out, but I kind of didn't want to because it felt wrong with moving, like... Since they're all related, it felt kind of wrong, like, just leaving them with these great-great-grandparents that they have, like, never met and have no relation to. Oh wow, they're actually gossiping about Tybalt right now. They're also gossiping about ghosts. <laughs> no ghosts. They're, I'm not sure how they... Like, either they're annoyed at being resurrected, or... None of these people like paranormal, do they? Let's have a look. I don't know. He likes paranormal, but she really doesn't. And neither does she. So, that's funny. Because they were ghosts. Very gossipy. Anyway, um... <laughs> Time to test this. I think if this doesn't work, I can just use the inseminator because I mean, I did that last time anyway. Yeah, you can resurrect them from other lots, so that's cool. Um, I figured you would be able to, but I wasn't 100% sure. I guess, like, their grave will just disappear from the other lot. All this entire process is buggy and their grave will stay there. I really, you just never know with the sims. Oh, that's not enough money. He's going to come back as a zombie. I didn't think this through. <laughs> oh god, what? I need to pay more attention. That is not, yeah, that's not enough. If you look at their relationships, actually, she's still married to Anthony, but, like, their relationships aren't... They're not, like, romantic towards each other, which is interesting. But she still has wants related, like, romantic wants towards him, but there's no... None of those... Yeah, that's that's quite interesting. And yet she came back with a friendship with Contessa. Um, and so did she. And it's the same relationship percentage as well. It's kind of interesting. I think Contessa is there grandchild right so yeah but they don't have a great relationship with their partners it's it's yeah that's odd um so we're bringing back him but probably this time <laughs> nah he still uh, resurrects with a broken aspiration. I don't know if every time it's missing, if it technically counts as the power aspiration. There's a little there's a little image on the Sims wiki of what the power aspiration thing is supposed to look like, but for some reason the icon isn't in game. And um Dirty old woman. <laughs> Julius's aspiration level is dirty old woman. Okay. I don't understand this aspiration. I've seen another one have like cold fish. Um, I think, I feel like the the descriptors are from the romance aspiration, because they sound sort of like they would be. Um, now I'm wondering, is, does the game think the sim is female? I don't know what his personality, oh, yeah, I forgot, they all, re they all came back with like no personality as well. They came back as friends, either that or they just very quickly became friends. Now, he's got a male voice actor, um, and so I don't, I don't know what's going on there. I don't know if that's just like... 
dirty old one. I'm gonna have to look into the power aspiration and the levels of the thing at some point because I haven't really looked at like the the level labels before or yeah, it's weird. I know I know it was replaced in game with the grow up aspiration as well, which is also odd because it doesn't seem like like was the power aspiration intended for kids? Because it doesn't make much sense. No, it's interesting because that's the garden club sim. The garden club sim never goes on any of the lots in Blightgate. And another thing that never happens, there's lots of little things that are wrong with Blightgate um, because it didn't generate properly. Like here, you've got these little like porter chug potions, but none of the sims in Blightgate have them when that when it's first loaded. There's a whole bunch of expansion pack things that just don't happen in that neighborhood, and it's kind of weird. But anyway. Um, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna move them to Blightgate, I think. Um, I'm gonna open this though, because to be honest, I don't know what happens if you save Rod Humble's package on a lot. One interesting thing I've just realised is that when you move a lot with a family in, it actually just- it doesn't clone it in the family bin. Like, it doesn't make a copy of the lot and the family. It actually just moves the lot and the family. So, if you ever do this, they're no longer- they can no longer be in that neighbourhood. Which is interesting, and probably another um, thing that leads to the bugginess of the entire process, really. Because, like, I think if they cloned the families, just, like, their appearance and stuff, it would work a lot better, right? Instead of, like, literally moving everything, and then some stuff getting deleted and some stuff being kept. Another interesting thing I'm noticing is when you save lots that are unoccupied to the housing bin, you can place them as many times as you want. But um, if I look here, there's the Caesar household, which I've just saved, but there's no, like, the the, the households that I created um, in my last video with Nutfuter and the Nygmos family and everything, they're no longer here because they've been moved to Blightgate, and, like, the version, like, the lot with them in is no longer in the occupied lot list in my game, which is... Quite interesting. I don't know. That doesn't happen with like unoccupied lots. You can place them wherever you want, and it will set. It will stay saved. But you can only have like one version of this family. Yeah, I, I, I can see why that. Like, it's very obvious that this process isn't isn't good. I can see why it corrupts the game and causes issues. To be honest. Okay, so after adding the Veronaville lot. Um, Blightgate wouldn't load, and I went back to a previous version that's normally fairly stable, like I've gotten it to work a few times after other things went wrong. That version didn't work, um, it continued to crash, it kept coming up with like DirectX graphic errors. Every time it was like a graphic related error, and I don't really understand why. Um, then I put this version in, and this version did load, but I really don't want to, like, continue with this version because it's the one where I, like, put the Rosalind and Critter families here and you can't really get rid of them because they're, like, super buggy. You can't move them out or anything. So, I have, like, <laughs> I have, like, six or seven maybe different versions of this now and, like, some of them work sometimes and some of them don't work. Um... But yeah, I really don't want to try this version. I don't know if I can go back to the other version and maybe get it to work now that I've done this version. Because it just seems like random when some neighbourhoods work sometimes. Like some versions of it work sometimes, but then other times they don't. It's just so odd. Okay, so I... No matter what I do, I can't get the version with enough fewer to load, and I also can't get the version of the neighbourhood that I wanted to use to load. So I am going to have to use this one for now, I think. It's just so weird, because there's no consistency to it. Like, it's not like it breaks and then it's just broken because of some form of corruption. It's like there's some kind of weird graphics error, and then one version of the neighbourhood will work for a while. But then it will stop working later, and then another version will start working. It's just the weirdest thing. It's, I don't even know why that's happening. It might be completely... I don't think it's completely unrelated, because I haven't had this with any other neighbourhood, but it doesn't seem like... It doesn't seem to make any logical sense what's happening with it, because it's some kind of graphics error for starters. And 
it's only happening some of the time. So, so they're still here. Um, I'm going to move them onto this street because I actually used a lot of Veronaville houses for this street, so kind of fits in. Um, it's kind of sad though because what I wanted to do was after they have their kids, if they end up looking interesting, please don't crash now. <laughs> oh god. Is it, has this crashed? What I wanted to do was if they have kids and they look weird, I was going to like get the Nygmos family, those kids, and then have them have kids together because like that would increase like the amount of facial corruption and probably look pretty interesting, thank god. I swear I like just this is this is this is like really bad now. <laughs> just the constant like unpredictable crashes so this is why you don't corrupt your neighborhoods by the way um because it's funny but also the crashing it's really annoying okay so i think there's probably still ways i could get the nick mop seriously so the weirdest thing has just happened Firstly, it crashed while loading the lot. The lot is not here, and the lot is also not in the occupied lot list anymore. So the game has literally just eaten the lot with those sims on. Um, and this is the same version, right? I just... Uh... <laughs> oh my god. Do those sims even exist anymore? Is there any way I can get them back? I just don't know. I really don't know at this point. Oh no. He's brought all of the gravestones with him. Oh no wait, maybe those are just the ones I put into his inventory before. Yeah, it's always so weird when it duplicates the gravestones when you move. That happened before once. I never know if like these rest in peace ones are safe to remove or not as well because they're all like they all have no information about them now i guess and you know what i've realized there's actually two gravestone textures right oh no wait that's kind of weird like one is kind of like very bumpy and the other side is smooth the smooth side looks better to be honest i just the um yeah <laughs> anyway and just focusing on textures now we have all these graves, so I guess I'll just put these ones back in here. I don't know if like ghosts are attached to those or not. I'm assuming those are just dead gravestones now. Okay. The household was like the Caesar household, and it doesn't seem to be to be here anymore. So I think they've pretty much just disappeared from potentially the game. Definitely from this neighbourhood I just placed them in. Um and now I have no idea where they're gone. Like, I assume they're still gone from Veronaville. I think I'm gonna have to start over. I just don't know what to do about this. This is just so, so like, what? So I had a look in Simpy, and all of those sims are still there, but it says they're uneditable now, which I think is normally what happens to deceased sims. Or like most of the sims that are uneditable are um, deceased in this neighbourhood anyway. But they're in the default household now, which is where a lot of the, um, well, universal NPCs, as you can see, end up. But it's also, I think, where like certain dead sims whose gravestones have been removed end up, and just dead sims in general. Like, you can see a bunch here now. So I will try and bring them back through here, see what happens. Um, I don't know if it's going to say the sim died on another lot. No? Okay. So Calpurnia has now lost her aspiration. And, um... I'm hoping she hasn't lost all her genetics. And if you look, you can actually see... Uh, a whole bunch of people that shouldn't even really be in this neighbourhood 
which is interesting. Um, they're part of their family tree, but they're technically based in Veronaville. So we've got these sims here now, and all of their aspirations have gone. Um, he seems to have wants. She doesn't have any. She has wants. And uh, he has wants. So I think maybe her wants are the only ones that are kind of broken. Not that it matters, but I think I should be able to give them their aspirations back using this. Okay, I'm going to take them to the mirror now and see if we can like get the effects to show. I don't know. Okay, well nothing's showing up yet, so... I'm not sure if it's working now or not. <laughs> if you look in the image, it's quite subtle, it's just something to do with their chin that's broken, but I'm really not seeing anything though. Like, it doesn't seem to be broken now. Perhaps it only looks broken some of the time and not others. Alternatively, um, whatever happened to them just messed up their genetics. And I don't know. And I can't see anything happening with their chin. There's nothing obviously wrong with this, so... Hmm. Something else I've just noticed? Um, is they've all come back as adults. They're supposed to be elders according to the Sims wiki because it's, it says that if she is resurrected and aged down to an adult, um, ah, oh, okay. It's only if they're an adult that this shows up, but the game is already recognising them as adults now and I don't know if it was a minute ago because I wasn't paying close attention, but because they're adults now, They've got this mesh, and it's... Okay, I'm going to try aging them to teens, and then back up to adults, and see if their appearance changes. I may have to just start this again, because... <laughs> well, she's got the appearance of a teen now. So... She's Cleopatra, right? Well, age her to an adult. Ah, yes, yes. So that's what I mean. It's like... Okay, so yeah, actually, it does go all the way down. In some photos I saw, it, it, it from the angles that it was showing, it was only like a little way down, and it looked like it was some kind of metal pole. And um, I think you saw that when she just aged, but now it's like all the way down there. So I'm going to do the same thing with Cleopatra, because apparently she has the same... I mean, not Cleopatra. What's her name? Calpurnia. She has the same thing going on. Um... That's quite the outfit she aged into. Um, right, so now we want to make her an adult. She's actually got red hair. I think a lot of the Cap family do. It's so odd. She's an adult, but her hair's gone back to being grey. Like, it was red as a teen, now it's grey again. Everything's all sort of, like, mixed up. I wonder what she'll actually look like in the mirror. Like, also they've both aged into that exact same hat. And the grey, oh my god, the grey has like replaced the red hair colour. But blonde, black and brown are still available. So that's kind of weird. Um, <laughs> what do you have against redhead sims? That's just rude. What if they wanted to be red? But her hair wasn't red a minute ago, was it? I thought her hair was another colour, so I don't know. Like, wasn't her colour brown before? I don't know. Okay. So, they should be able to have kids now. 
I didn't record this, but I actually got them pregnant at the same time, so there were like two of the sound effects going off at the same time, like the little pregnancy tune. Okay, so I'm gonna speed up their pregnancy. I also just realised that they can also get pregnant with each other, which might be interesting. It might like double the chance of the um, kids getting their weird like, chin mouth situation. Welcome sims. I think these are all the sims that live in the- I had like four friends that I moved in together and they live in that house here, yeah, across the road. There's only three of them that have come over though, there's actually four of them. Okay, so... Wait, her hair's now red again, so it, it's working again. That's... interesting. So her hair works with her pregnancy outfit, but it doesn't work with her normal outfit. You know, she kind of looks a bit like a nervous subject, in a way, and also I've just realised her eyebrows are blonde. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. Oh god, they really did get messed up by whatever happened, didn't they? Because I think she's got a male voice now, too. Yeah, they're both male now. They're both male, they're both have whatever weird things going on with their hair and their age was wrong. Okay, so there's... Oh no. Oh my god, it's happening at exactly the same time. I've never had this happen before. <laughs> I didn't even think this was possible. Oh, of course, it's the alien pregnancy because the game recognises them as male. I don't know if this is going to do the weird forehead thing. Their kids have to be female as well for it to work, but I just don't know what... What happened to them may have messed up with their genetic... messed up their genetics, so I don't know if it's still going to work. I mean, their chins are still broken, so that's... <laughs> that's a good sign. It might work, I don't know. I just read the description on the Sims wiki and there's no photos, but it sounded insane. Um... I don't know, Jim. Oh, uh, all their kids are boys! This is no good! I, apparently the weird mouth thing doesn't happen to male, male sims. Well, we'll age them up anyway, but it says it doesn't work with them, so... They've aged into, like, the outfit and hairstyle, I think, that, um... What's his name? Buck Grunt, I think? Like, the youngest Grunt kid has a kind of similar look. Well, I don't see any for- I don't see any mouths on foreheads, so this has not worked out well. We'll just move Jason out with the kids, I guess. And, uh, then try again. This is kind of the opposite of what was happening last time with all of the female sims. Now I'm only having male sims. I've gotten her pregnant with um, Cleopatra. So that should hopefully increase the chance, maybe, of the genetics being weird. No, no. What's happening with that monster? Uh, I assume what's happening is like one of the ghosts is supposed to be coming out now, but because all these gravestones are like duplicates, that's not going to happen. chin looks so like like a really sharp piece of like something it looks like it's stabbing through her <laughs> like it should be painful or something
Okay, so this one... It's not showing up on the baby, and I feel like something this dramatic should show up straight away, but I guess it's worth trying. Also, it's not just that they need to be female, they also need to have inherited the mouth. But since they have four children, I have never seen this before. Wow, I've actually never seen that fear before, like that exact one. I guess some have like a specific number of kids they don't want. Well, this is very counterproductive to our current mission, but... I feel like... <laughs> I feel like in a lot of the households in this series, The Sims have um, fears related to having kids, and uh, it's kind of funny because a lot of my Sims don't tend to, maybe because I often make family Sims and stuff, or at least... I think maybe romance sims might be more likely to roll these types of fears, I'm not sure. But like, yeah, it's um... I don't know if this is happening or not. It's supposed to be happening, but no, okay. Maybe she has to be put down first to grow her up. Yeah, it's just funny that so many of these sims have rolled these fears. It's quite kind of appropriate, really. It's like they know. No, I... I don't think she inherited the chin. What does it say? If player chooses to... If any of them inherit Cleopatra's mouth, the mouths will be on their foreheads when they age into adults. It's a good job I read that because I didn't notice. So it's just when they're adults that that happens? That's... It's very odd. Okay, let's age her up and see if this happens then. I always thought the outfit kind of looked like a lab coat. So, I, I usually gave it to, like, sims that I wanted to grow up into knowledge sims. Okay. So. I'm kind of scared, actually. Oh no! I'm, I, this is legitimately scaring me now, I don't know why. Oh god, what the heck? Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> that is just... It's not quite what I was expecting. I just expected it like a mouth in the middle of the head. And I'm not sure if this is scarier or, or not. <laughs> why? why did they do this to this game? Oh my god. It's just like... I mean, I know this is an accident, but you just... Why? What? It's literally just... Oh my god. It moves as well. <laughs> it says move. Her forehead moves. I mean, like, her mouth, her forehead moves. Like, it, like it, it's animated like a normal mouth, and then the teeth are just floating outside of it. Oh my god. How would, like, various mouth interactions work like this? I wonder if, like... Okay, we get it. You're all very upset. And that kind of makes sense, considering what's happening. But if you could just stop screaming. I'm kind of going to have to get her to cook some food and stuff now. I wonder if this is genetic. I mean, it's it's occurred because of, like... Yeah, I guess it must be right, so... Oh god. Now I really want to try and, like, have her have kids with one of the Nick, like, a descendant of the Nygmos family. I don't think I'm going to be able to get that fam that household back from the other neighbourhood. Um, I don't know, really, because of the unreliable crashes. But I might be able to, like... I, I might be able to just, like, move the Nygmos family here again and then have them have more kids I don't know okay so just before I try like 
the never-ending process of trying to move sims because i'm pretty sure it will be a headache and then maybe the neighborhood will stop working again i just want to like see what it looks like when she eats because her her mouth is not where it's supposed to be i don't understand why she's got the chip the weird chin line going into the ground as well but none of them have the same problem at any age with their mouth being on their forehead so i don't understand how that's work how that works but um it's like a problem that only happens in the kids i guess and only the female kids which is just very bizarre okay so the animation is still like you know she's putting it into the into the area of the face where it normally would go but then like it, it the head <laughs> The the head is like the mouth is still animating on her forehead. This is the weirdest facial thing I have like seen so far. What the heck? I thought the other family was weird, but no, this definitely wins. <laughs> I'd love to know, like, how this happened. Obviously it's something to do with changes they made throughout the, um, development of the game. And, you know, but, like, wow. <laughs> I, you know what I also love? I didn't even... I didn't even use cheats to get them resurrected. Like, I know everything's gone wrong, but they were resurrectable by just using the Resurrectonomatron. So, like, all of this is like normal playing and this can still happen and they didn't like they just didn't notice there's so much stuff that there's so much crazy stuff in this game that has just been missed mostly with the deceased sims but honestly that feature where they made it possible to resurrect dead sims that was yeah that that's where most of the problems have sort of come from because they did that after and there was all that crazy stuff in the base game neighborhoods. A lot of the Sims just have old um, file data and various like corrupt stuff going on. I'm kind of glad that this wasn't removed though, this problem, because honestly, this is hilarious. Yeah, that is... it is so weird. She's just brushing her, like, skin. <laughs> also, like, the entire area of her nose walk like her nose to her top of her forehead, that area just kind of warps during doing certain expressions. Well, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and get the Nygmos Sims back here. Um, I, I don't, you know, I'm just going to try and get them from Strange Town to here and then we'll have them have kids again and, and do that stuff. And then I'm going to try and like get the two different types of corruptions to be genetically passed down together and see what that looks like. So. Blightgate started crashing again, so I wasn't having that this time. So what I've done is I've just gone to Blue Water Village, um, the sub neighborhood attached to Blightgate, and that loads. So now I'm going to move in the Nygmos family, and then I'm just going to move the other Sims uh, in using cheats, basically. Okay, so we've gotten in here, and I'm going to try and add those other Sims from the main part of the neighborhood here. Okay, so I decided to just bring back the um, sims with like corrupted facial genetics because the lot was going to be too full otherwise. Um, I had Willow and Creon have a kid, which I've called Kevin. Um, for some reason he actually aged up into a similar hair from one of the sims in the last video. That seems to happen a lot. And now, basically, I'm going to experiment with like mixing their genetics together to see what happens. <laughs> I think this lot actually has any lights inside because it's still pretty dark.
Did she like, when she moves, I think her chin goes through <laughs> Cole Purdy's body. Like, they're attacking people with their long chins. Okay, so this one might be able to inherit the mouth. I don't think she's gotten much of the corruption from her dad looking at her face. Um, I think, like, the eye area is sort of odd looking, but yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to tell. Um, She's really not a fan of kids. If this was The Sims 3, she'd have the dislike kids trait. Huh, I love that. She just aged up into the pink dragon costume. Yeah, her nose is a little odd, but it's not like... Yeah, it's not that dramatic in, in this generation. Um, I might try a few more times, though, to see. But for the meantime, we're gonna, like, make her an adult. So yeah, she inherited the face, <laughs> but uh, I think her hair's kind of getting in the way, to be honest. It kind of covers part of her teeth as well. <laughs> Look at that thumbnail image. It's just crazy family true. Oh yeah, and those brothers are still around. Actually, they're like half brothers, right? Or I think she's she's technically related to all of them because she has two moms. I think one of the maternity outfits has like a alien t-shirt or something. That one's probably my like, favourite. This cinematic kind of fits more <laughs> with like the weird pregnancy effects that- I mean the weird genetic effects of The Sims. I don't know. I guess there's some like, you can sort of see the effects around the eyes, but it's not that dramatic looking. You can see like there's quite large holes and then something going on there. What does her sister look like? Let's like compare them. <laughs> I think, look at the camera, man. Yeah, I think... I think she inherited most of her face from her mum. And then she's inherited a little bit more of her dad's corruption. Uh, the nose, I don't know what, like, they have different noses, but I don't know whose nose that is, to be honest, it's hard to say. She obviously got her mum's nose. Her nose, I don't know where it came from, to be honest. I don't think it even looks like a dad's nose. It might just be a completely different nose. Like, that might have come from some other relative. I guess it's it's sort of like his nose, but like a little different. Like, it's sort of similar, but different. 
I kind of wish like that whole area um, is like I guess based on her genetics so it would be interesting if you could get like the holes as well but I'm assuming that can't happen because it's like they inherit one set I don't think they could have both happening at the same time like either you can get the forehead mouth or you can get the holes I think as far as I know anyway I don't know I know like sometimes stuff ca can be in between different th yeah I don't know I'm not quite sure how that works genetically what was I gonna oh yeah I was gonna try and see if um, it works in young adult heard because who knows what that'll do I don't know yeah so it also so it works on both young adult and adult and uh oh you can sort of see her eyes are uh, quite messed up there but her long chin has disappeared in elder form um which is interesting but we want them to, we just move them to be an adult again because their face is not interesting as a teenager. Guess just going clubbing. I don't think it's gonna look like much more weird than, like I think that's about as much as she could probably inherit because she inherited like his eyes. I guess the nose area could be a bit more, a bit different but it looks really weird when they like start laughing <laughs> in their head. I don't know if I can like... Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.